How many potatoes do you think there are? Let's see. Idaho, russet, new potatoes, fingerling, Yukon gold, Marie Piper. Yeah, well, I'm running out already. But in Peru, there are nearly 5,000 varieties. And not only that, but you can do almost anything with them. You can boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. <laughs> They're everywhere. But do you know how much of a superpower the potato really is? The potato is indigenous to the Andes Mountains on the western coast of South America, and they are considered to have been first cultivated by the Quechua people who live in and around modern-day Peru. Since they live about 12,000 feet above sea level, there's not exactly a lot of room for farming, so they have to terrace the land much like parts of East and Southeast Asia. The terraces also allow them to grow and develop stronger variants of potatoes by moving them further up the mountain step by step into the harsher climate. And these terraces are still used today. The Quechua also developed a method of preservation through freeze drying because of the crazy weather. They left the potatoes out in the freezing cold nights and then thawed them during the hot days. They then repeat this process several times and this meant they could keep their potatoes for over five years. They're super practical. Because potatoes heal from the high reaches of the Andes Mountains, they are extremely hardy and can grow in temperatures ranging from 2.8 degrees to 40 degrees Celsius, or between just above freezing and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. They don't require a lot of fertilizer or other additives, so they're relatively green, so to speak. But they're also just really easy to grow. You can take a piece of potato, put it in the ground, water it, and voila, a new potato plant. But that can be dangerous, because if you plant a whole field of potatoes with the same genes, clones basically, then your entire crop is susceptible to disease. Like say, no, we'll get there. The potato is a tuber, meaning the plant's excess nutrients is stored underground, protecting it from the elements, unlike wheat, rye, and rice. It's extra glucose from photosynthesis that is then stored as reserve food. And the starch inside is a polysaccharide, meaning it's a whole bunch of monomers that link together. And when we digest it, we break it down into sugar molecules that give us energy. Potatoes are incredibly nutritious. You could survive on just potatoes and milk alone if the situation called for it. And you can easily extract the starch for baking or as a thickener for soups and curries and for more practical purposes like paper, adhesives, and even some plastics. When you think of a potato, what country pops into your head? Ireland? Belgium? Well, let's look at its journey from the so-called New World to the Old World. So, you're living in Europe in the Middle Ages, and all you eat are some vegetables, some meat, if you can afford it, and lots of greens for your delicious gruel. Then Columbus and the other Spaniards show up with spoils from their raucous adventures in the New World in the 1500s. You might know some of them. They brought back corn, cacao, cassava, chili peppers, guano, peanuts, pineapples, tobacco, tomatoes, and quinine, which was later to be found an effective treatment for malaria. And they also brought back syphilis, the dogs. Suddenly you've got all sorts of flavors in your diet. All these things made their way across the globe, defining many cultures' distinctive cuisines. I'm looking at you, Italy. Now, it did take some time for the potato to catch on in European cuisines, because it's a tough vegetable and it was referred to as windy or gassy food, fit for only the peasant body. It didn't begin to take hold until the mid to late 18th century. In 1744, the Prussian king actually had to order peasants to eat potatoes because there was a famine. Toward the end of the 18th century, when they figured out the right way to cook the thing, I guess, the potato provided such a wealth of accessible food that cities were able to grow along with the population. Expeditions by boat could be sustained for longer periods, so European countries, in some way, really became world powers in no small part because of the potato. It's 1841, and the Industrial Revolution is in full swing. Your life expectancy has shot up all the way to 40. Everything's going great. You go to harvest your potato crop, but wait, it's all mush. And so is the next one, and the next one, and the next. They're all useless. Well, it turns out the Spaniards only brought back a few variants of the potato, and the way they were farmed was through cloning. 
It was a monoculture, no genetic diversity. Much of the potato crops were devastated, particularly in Ireland, which led to over a million deaths and many people immigrating to the United States. When the famine came to an end, it wasn't due to some solution in farming, but rather because of the decrease in population, and the potato crop healed, more or less, naturally. The evidence is undecided as to whether the potato facilitated the growth of empires, urbanization, and population growth, or it was used after the fact to encourage these things more. Either way, this plant became a central part of European livelihood and culture, much like rice is considered to have jump-started Asian empires much earlier. Potatoes today are a massive industry. They're grown and eaten all over the world now, and the industry itself is worth billions of dollars. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, the United States alone produced over 19 million metric tons of potatoes in 2019. But again, we still grow them mostly in a monoculture, meaning they're more vulnerable to blight and pests. Climate change has also caused the rare indigenous types of potatoes to be grown higher up on the mountains, and the warmer temperatures will threaten our ability to grow them in the future. However, in 1995, NASA grew tiny little potato plants in the Space Shuttle Columbia. And more recently, scientists have conducted tests growing plants in Mars-like soil. So it sure looks like potatoes will be an ideal crop to feed ourselves off-planet. But hopefully not in Matt Damon's. The utility of the potato cannot be understated. It helped to sustain massive groups of people, and looking into the future, it could be one of the first to support life on other planets. The potato has saved us time and time again, so the next time you order a burger with fries instead of, say, carrots, take off your hat to the Quechua people for providing us with one of the most delicious and fulfilling vegetables we have. Thanks for watching. As always, the research is down below, and I would highly recommend reading Catherine J. Allen's article, Body and Soul in Quechua Thought, for more insight on how the potato is so closely tied to Quechuan culture. It's awesome. So please give us a like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. And the starch inside is a polysaccharide, meaning it's a whole bunch of nominers. Menominers is a whole bunch of not men, not menominer. No! Not meners. Oh my god. Menominers. The things are like. Mominers. I can't. Oh my god. Menominers? Monomer. <laughs> menominers. <laughs> do, 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 do. Meaning it's a whole bunch of. Mo god damn it. It's one mer. Monomer. Monomers that link together. Yeah! <laughs> Ha 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 ha!